what's going on jigsaw land, you know that magnesium is important. But do you know if you're actually magnesium deficient? In this video, I want to break down the three telltale simple signs that you're probably deficient in magnesium. I'm going to go into some detail as to how each one affects you on a different level. So let's get right to the science. But first off, why is magnesium deficiency such a big thing? And really, why are we magnesium deficient? Well, the simple truth is that our soil is depleted in magnesium. It just comes down to that. So we're over harvesting plants, which means our soil is depleted, which means those curler plants don't end up having magnesium, which means the animals that eat those plants don't get the magnesium, which by default means that us as humans that are eating a normal diet don't end up getting magnesium. So we're forced to have to supplement it. Well, there's a couple other things too, like fluoride and chlorine in our water. That makes a big difference too. That strips the magnesium in our bodies. But there's one other thing that a lot of us don't realize. You know I am a huge proponent of a ketogenic diet. Not simply because I like meat or just because I like fats, but because I know that too much insulin and too many carbohydrates can elicit a very negative response in the body. And depleting your body of magnesium is one of them. High levels of insulin end up inhibiting tubular activity, which therefore means that the magnesium that would normally be absorbed is not reabsorbed back into the cell and it's excreted. So if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, even if you're an athlete and you think you need all those carbohydrates, it can be depleting your magnesium stores. The simple fact is that the journal, the American College of Nutrition has found that over 68% of Americans are deficient in magnesium and over 11% of that is over 50% deficient in magnesium, meaning they have a huge, huge deficiency. So what are the three warning signs that you're magnesium deficient? The first one is gonna be cramps and muscle tightness. And I'm not just talking about the constant muscle cramping that we get when you work out, I'm talking about the tightness that occurs too. Like if you've worked out and you feel like you're just not recovering, like your hamstrings are staying crazy, crazy tight, well, it could be a magnesium issue. And it has to do with the fact that it affects your ion exchange when your magnesium levels are depleted. You see, magnesium binds with a membrane of a cell, which means that if magnesium is not present, other minerals can't really do their job. To make it really, really simply put, the same kind of reaction that would cause a cramp can actually cause all kinds of different contractions of the muscles, making it so you don't work out as well either. So again, simply put, being deficient in magnesium also can make you deficient in other minerals and cause an excess of minerals that shouldn't be there. You're basically throwing off the entire homeostasis of that ion exchange, causing too much calcium, too little magnesium, potentially not enough sodium, potentially too much sodium. Basically, without magnesium there to regulate, ion exchange goes completely haywire. We do have to remember that minerals regulate our muscle contractions. And if we forget that, we forget about working out. We forget about running. We forget about all of this stuff that requires muscle contraction. So I want you to really think about it. Do you have trouble recovering from exercise? Do you get cramps often? Do you feel stiff? Well, magnesium could be playing a huge role in that. Now let's talk about the next one. The next one is sleeplessness. Do you have trouble staying asleep? Okay, studies have shown by and large that many Americans have trouble staying asleep. A lot of Americans can fall asleep, but they have trouble staying asleep. Well, magnesium affects your parasympathetic nervous system. When you do not activate your parasympathetic nervous system, you're never really able to relax. It's a simple way to put it. But magnesium also works with something known as GABA, which is known as gamma amino butyric acid. And I've talked about it in a lot of videos. GABA is responsible for helping you relax, okay? It dictates a lot of other neurotransmitters, a lot of other catecholamines, and a lot of other hormones in your body that help you relax. If you don't have GABA, or if you don't have magnesium present, your body has a hard time producing melatonin. Melatonin is what balances your circadian rhythm, what allows you to get tired when it gets dark, or what allows you to wake up when it gets light. If you don't have that melatonin or the absence of melatonin, really, it makes it hard to have that balance. It makes it hard to stay asleep. There was even a study that took a look at this. One group of participants was given 500 milligrams of magnesium and one was not. The group that was given 500 milligrams of magnesium experienced significantly better sleep patterns and higher levels of renin than those that did not. So it's really plain and simple. And that's not the only study that's proven this. There have been a lot of long tail studies that have shown magnesium has a direct correlation with gamma amino butyric acid, which again has a direct correlation with your sleep. So if you're two for two right now, you may want to stop this video and just go grab a bottle of magnesium. But let's get on to the third one, and that is anxiety and stress. When it comes down to anxiety and stress, it's safe to say that Americans are already hardwired for it. But what if I told you that a lack of magnesium could be playing a big role in that? 
You see, remember how I mentioned magnesium affects GABA? Well, GABA also affects your stress levels. It also affects how you react to stress. And magnesium, again, plays a big role there. So if you're someone that's chronically feeling stressed and like you can't combat stress, well, that might be the case. But we also have to remember that magnesium regulates that famed cortisol. I'm always talking about cortisol as it pertains to belly fat or as it pertains to that fight or flight response. Well, remember, magnesium is gonna help balance that. It's gonna help keep it in check. And if you're deficient in magnesium, your cortisol levels can get totally out of whack. Now remember, cortisol isn't bad. We just wanna make sure that it's remaining under control. So there was even a study that looked pretty far in depth at how magnesium worked with cortisol. There was a 2012 study published in the Journal of Neuropharmacology. And what this study looked at was mice that were magnesium deficient. Well, lo and behold, these mice that were magnesium deficient also had high levels of anxiety. Well, high levels of anxiety also ended up showing that they had high levels of cortisol. What the study found was that the deficiency ended up activating the paraventricular hypothalamic nucleus. Basically, that's the part of your brain that activates stress. There's a couple of different components of your brain that activate stress, but this truly ends up being the epicenter that further communicates with the pituitary, communicates with the hypothalamus and the hippocampus to ultimately trigger stress or allow you to be relaxed. So there you have it. There's three simple ways that you can start telling if you're magnesium deficient. Now, the only true way to truly, truly know if you're magnesium deficient at the cellular level is to get a test on your RBC magnesium. That's gonna be your red blood cell count of magnesium. How much magnesium is actually being taken up by the cell and being utilized properly. And as always, if you're deficient in magnesium and you have a specific goal in mind, there's a jigsaw suite just for you. Whether it ends up being the Mag SRT or it ends up being the Electrolyte Supreme or any other of the Jigsaw Magnesium products, you are fully set. So make sure you click on through and pick up your bottles today so that you can get on to being the best version of yourself. I'll see you soon.